Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. If you've been searching for a safe, fully enclosed entry-level laser engraver, the Locklick I Engrave Cover 10 Watt might just catch your eye. It combines affordability with solid safety features, a generous work area, and support for a wide range of materials. But does it live up to its promise, or do its limitations hold it back? After a month of hands-on testing, I'll be walking you through the setup, build quality, performance, and engraving results, so you can decide if this is the right laser for your workshop. Let's get into it. Before we begin, this I Engrave laser engraver was sent for me to review by HTV Rons. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, from lasers, materials, or accessories, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. The Locklick I Engrave is a 10 watt diode benchtop laser engraver. It produces a 455 nanometer wavelength visible blue light laser. Diode lasers are great for cutting and engraving natural materials like woods, leather, stone, and other materials like black acrylic, coated aluminum, and some stainless steel. Because of the visible blue light, diode lasers do not work on transparent materials like glass or clear acrylic. Starting with the laser module itself, at the top we see the cooling fans, which blow through the module to cool the diodes and help clear away smoke. The 10 watt diodes inside are best suited for engraving and light cutting work. While a 10 watt diode can cut 3mm plywood in a single pass, you'll either need to slow it way down or use multiple passes for thicker materials. If you do need to consistently cut thicker woods, then you might need a more powerful laser. But for thinner materials, or for mostly engraving work, then a 10 watt diode is the more economical option. At the bottom we see a protective window which helps block the laser light while in operation, while still giving you visibility to the nozzle. Focusing is done using the built-in focus lever. Simply loosen the screw at the bottom of the module and swing down the focus lever. Loosen the screw securing the laser module and slide the module down until the focus lever rests on the surface you are engraving. Tighten the laser module, swing the focus laser back up, and tighten the screw to secure it in place. Focusing is very quick and easy. The laser module screw has a nice handle and tightens in less than a half a turn, so it's a simple motion and easy to do. And there's no extra focusing tool that you can lose, it's all built into the laser module itself. To help with clearing away smoke, the laser module does have an air assist inlet at the top. By hooking up an air compressor, pressurized air can be pushed through to the bottom of the laser. Air assist enhances cut quality, especially in woods, and can help clear away smoke and soot. The I Engraves air assist is unlike any that I've seen before. Most force the air out through the nozzle, so that the air is directed down right where the laser is cutting. The I Engraves air assist is simply a hose that points down, offset from the nozzle. I believe that this makes the air assist far less effective. It is better than no air assist, but I still got plenty of soot and darkening around the edges, especially with deeper wood engraving. I tried to improve it by gluing the hose onto the nozzle, but the angle still wasn't right and my modification made it worse than the stock downward facing hose. The I Engrave cover is a fully enclosed laser engraver. The top consists of an amber polycarbonate lid which does an excellent job at absorbing the laser light. This gives the I Engrave cover a class 1 laser certification, meaning that you can use it without needing additional eye protection. This keeps you and everyone around you safe. I love it. HTV Rant does include a pair of safety glasses as well though, if you don't want to install the cover. The lid lifts open to reveal the inside of the laser. The hinge feels sturdy enough, I didn't feel like I was going to break the top panels while opening or closing the laser. At the top of the lid is a strip of white LED lights which illuminate the interior. At the back of the enclosure is a built-in ventilation fan. This, combined with the included 5-foot duct, makes it easy to vent the smoke and fumes outdoors. The fan is reasonably powerful for the 10 watt laser, and I had no problems with ventilation. The bottom is also enclosed, so no chance of laser light escaping out of the bottom. The gantry is belt driven and uses rubber V-slot wheels on both the X and Y axes. It's interesting that the Y axis rides on the inside of the frame. Both axes were smooth to move. The I Engrave has a working area of 300mm by 300mm. This is enough space to fit a full 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of material. Around the front we see the I.O a USB Type-B port to connect to your computer, a TF card slot for storing designs from the mobile app, and a main power switch. There is a key lockout with two provided keys, as well as an emergency stop latch. This instantly stops the laser when pressed, and is great to see. On the left side we see the Wi-Fi antenna and power port for the optional air assist compressor. The LED lights and exhaust fan wires pass through a grommet on the left side of the cover, and are controlled by a separate switch and power supply. It is kind of strange that they aren't powered by the laser itself, but a separate switch is only slightly inconvenient. The I Engrave cover has a number of safety features. First are the two switches for the lid. If the lid is lifted while the laser is cutting, the laser immediately pauses. As soon as the cover is closed, the laser resumes right where it left off. 
This takes less than a second to detect and pause, which is awesome to see. It also has tilt detection. If the laser is bumped or tilted about 45 degrees, the laser will automatically stop. Finally, the laser module has a flame and temperature detection at the bottom. This will stop the laser if flames appear. As with most of these flame detection mechanisms, it just detects bright light. I was able to get it to falsely trigger the flame detection when the laser is in direct sunlight. This is not unusual for benchtop lasers, I've experienced the same with many other brands, although I was surprised that the cover didn't block the sunlight enough. The standard I engrave cover kit does not include a honeycomb panel or an air assist compressor. For my tests, I use my own honeycomb panel and compressor, and I would highly recommend anyone with a laser to pick both of these up. You can purchase the I engrave all-in-one bundle, which includes a honeycomb panel, air assist compressor, and rotary roller, or you can purchase those accessories down the line as you need them. Assembling the I engrave cover was pretty straightforward. The laser itself arrives mostly assembled. Unscrew two brackets securing the gantry during shipping, add in some cable management ties, and screw on the four feet. And then you can slide the module in and plug the cables and the laser is ready to go. The cover requires a bit more assembly. Each side consists of separate plastic panels with pre-cut holes. They all attach together using a series of brackets and screws. The various grommets, fans, and switches were all pre-assembled though. Once the lid is on, you can press on the LED light strip and push the cables through the grommet. Overall, the assembly took me 40 minutes to complete. The instructions were clear, and all of the panels were nicely labeled. And I love the look of this laser after it is assembled. HTV Rant provides a light burn configuration file for the lock lick I engrave on the included SD card. I love light burn, and I highly recommend anyone with a laser pick up a light burn license. You just need to import the config file and you are ready to engrave. This isn't a review of light Burn, but the software is packed full of every feature you could need, from designing tools, importing designs, creating test patterns, changing cutting and engraving parameters, and much, much more. And it worked well with the iEngrave cover. The iEngrave has Wi-Fi capabilities and can be used with the LockLick app for iOS and Android. Unfortunately, when I tried to connect my Pixel 7 to the laser, it failed to connect, even when switching my Wi-Fi network to only 2.4 GHz mode. This is not unexpected. My phone seems to only have a 50% success rate when connecting to lasers like this. So unfortunately, I cannot review the app connectivity and features in this video. So with all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at how well the I engrave cover cuts and engraves. As with all lasers, be aware of what materials are and are not safe to use in a laser engraver. Materials like PVC can emit dangerous fumes when cutting, which can harm you and damage your machine. Wood is a diode laser's favorite material. Running some cutting speed tests, the 10 watt I engrave was cutting 1 8 inch plywood between 300 and 400 millimeters per minute, although not reliably at that upper bound. I think the air assist is holding it back, as some Sometimes I'd get full cuts with the 400 millimeters per minute, but then sometimes I had to drop all the way down to 300 to ensure that it cut all the way through. My kerf tests show a 0.06 millimeter kerf offset. This shows that the I engraves laser is pretty well focused with a 0.06 millimeter dot size. That's pretty good for a 10 watt laser. This living hinge is a great example of what to expect on the Locklick I engrave. It cut cleanly at 300 millimeters per minute, and it's fun to play with a flexible piece of wood but you may notice the soot marks all around the engraved letters at the top. This is due to the air assist. It was engraved with the M and the T towards the top, and you can see how the soot is angled away from where the air assist hosed is positioned. It just doesn't do a great job, and you are left with darkened edges around cuts and engravings. Image engraving did work pretty well on the eye engrave. Playing around with 6,000 and 10,000 millimeters per minute engraving speeds, these pictures of my dog jacked turned out pretty cleanly. Nice contrast and good looking picture results. I was pleasantly surprised with black acrylics. The I engrave gave a nice white surface engraving on these 3D print log keychains. My first tests didn't cut all the way through, but slowing it down to two passes at 250 millimeters per minute cut through the three millimeter black acrylic. And anyone who has watched my channel knows that I love slate coasters, and the I engrave worked perfectly on them. It gave a very bright white engraving. I love the high contrast. I was also pleasantly surprised by the leather engraving. I was expecting lots of darkening around the edges, but the iEngrave handled this leather bracelet with no problems. A nice consistent engraving, and no darkening from soot. Coated aluminum cards also worked well on the iEngrave. There is a slight misalignment between the fill and the outline of the letters that I think is due to the card shifting slightly during engraving. I must not have secured it well enough, but it removed the coating and it looks good. And finally, by varying the power and line interval settings, you can get some nicely colored oxides on stainless steel. I was able to get various shades of blues, browns, oranges, and black on the eye engrave. Diode lasers cannot cut or engrave metals, but you can get these surface level oxides to form. Very pretty. 
So in conclusion, the Locklick Eye Engrave 10 Watt Laser Engraver is a capable entry-level laser engraver that slightly misses the mark. I love the full enclosure. It'll keep you and everyone around you safe from the dangerous laser beam. And the built-in ventilation lets you easily vent away harmful smoke and fumes outside. But I feel that the 10 watt laser is held back by the suboptimal air assist position. When it lines up correctly with the air assist, it was able to eat through the wood near the top of my speed test compared to other 10 watt lasers. But I ended up having to slow it way down so that it more reliably cut in all directions. And it just didn't clear away the soot from deeper engravings adequately. I love how the eye engrave came mostly assembled, and the cover add-on was easy to put together. I was up and engraved in no time. The Locklick I Engrave Cover 10 Watt Laser Engraver is on sale for 595 US dollars at the time of recording. I would recommend their all-in-one kit, which includes the I Engrave Cover, as well as a honeycomb panel, air compressor, rotary roller, and riser kit, on sale for 765 US dollars. And if you are interested in just the laser engraver itself, the I Engrave is on sale for only 425 US dollars. With the pricing in mind, the Locklick I Engrave Cover could be a compelling entry-level laser for a hobby. If you don't mind the extra darkening on deeper wood engravings, then the issues with the air assist doesn't make too much of a difference. There are not many other fully enclosed options near that price point, so the eye engraved cover has that advantage. I would recommend a honeycomb panel and an air assist compressor to really make the most of the laser. If you are also looking for a rotary roller, then the all-in-one kit would get you all three for a pretty good deal. Otherwise, if you don't need the roller, then you could save a few bucks by picking up the honeycomb and air assist separately. So thank you all for watching my review of the HTV Ront Locklick Eye Engrave cover. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.